Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we'll be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Canon Inc., ticker symbol CAJ. At the time of recording this video, Canon is trading for just over $23 per share. They've been pretty steady over the past year. Their stock is only down about 2%, so down significantly less than the overall market. As we'll see in our analysis, over the past 10 years, Canon has had a declining business, and as a result of this, they've also had a declining stock price. Their stock has declined at a rate of about 6% compounded each year. Canon is a Japanese company, and it's not heavily traded in the United States. So in part, because it's not heavily traded, its volatility is relatively low. They've only fluctuated about $4 from their 52-week high and low. Whereas even blue chip stocks in the U.S. fluctuate significantly in a given year, typically somewhere in the range of over 50% fluctuation in their stock price. Canon has a market cap of over 3 billion Japanese yen. This translates to about $24.5 billion in U.S. dollars. To get an understanding of the business, Canon designs, manufactures, and distributes an extensive range of consumer and electronic products, including copiers, cameras, lenses, and inkjet printers. The business operates four major business segments, office, imaging systems, medical systems, and industry and others. Its global consumer base and domestically concentrated operations create inherent currency exposure, which can cause performance to fluctuate. Canon's headquarters and 28 of its 46 manufacturing plants are in Japan but nearly 80% of revenue is delivered from international markets. The firm has been expanding into new geographies and markets to mitigate this exposure. It sells its products under the Canon brand through subsidiaries or independent distributors to dealers and retail outlets, as well as directly to end users globally. Canon Inc. was founded in 1933 and is headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. Let's get right into our fundamental analysis, which will be taking a look at Canon's financials and coming to a better understanding of the business. Pillar number one, we want Canon's average five-year PE to be below 22 and a half. Currently, their PE is about 14. Over the past five years, it's averaged just under 20 at about 19 and a half. So pillar number one is a check. Pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. Over long periods of time, a stock is going to return what its underlying business returns and its returns on capital are going to be those business returns. Canon's had a return on capital that's fluctuated over this time period, ranging from about 10.5% all the way down to just under 4 So averaged out, Canon averages 7.6% return on capital, which is below that 9% mark we're looking for. So pillar number two is going to be our first X. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. All these numbers have been converted from Japanese yen to U.S. dollars. So in 2017, Canon had about $36 billion of revenue, and that's shrank to about $30.5 billion in 2021. So this is an X. They've actually seen a five-year revenue decline. Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. Similar to revenues, these have shrank over this time period. So in 2017, they had $2.1 billion of net income and this declined to $1.8 billion of net income in 2021. So back-to-back -back Xs on five-year net income growth and five-year revenue growth. Next, for pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. We don't want a business to be diluting existing shareholders. Instead, when a business is trading for a reasonable valuation, we prefer that a company is actively buying back their shares. So over five years, Canon's bought back about 40,000 shares, this comes out to about a 4% total buyback. So very, very slight decrease in shares outstanding here. So pillar number five is going to be a check. It's good to see that they're not declining as a business and diluting shareholders at the same time. Next up, pillar number five, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. So free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. It can be used to buy back shares, pay down debt, pay dividends, make acquisitions, and reinvest back in the business. In 2017, Canon had about $3.6 billion of free cash flow. And similar to net income and revenue, their free cash flow also declined. In 2021, they only had about $2.4 billion of free cash flow. In the years in between, in 2018, they had $1.6 billion. In 2019, they had $1.3 billion. And in 2020, they had $1.6 billion. 
they've experienced a decline in their five-year free cash flow. Averaged out over these five years, they produce about $2.1 billion of free cash flow a year. We'll use that $2.1 billion number when evaluating the company's use of leverage and determining how Canon's market cap compares to its free cash flow profile. Pillar number seven, we want Canon's net debt to be below their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by five. So Canon has a negative net debt of $728 million. So what this means is that net debt is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and cash equivalents. So Canon actually has $728 million of cash and equivalents on their balance sheet after paying off all their debts. So they have positive cash on their balance sheet. Pillar number seven is going to be a check without even running the calculation. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want Canon's market cap of $24.5 billion to be below their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by 20. So their average five-year free cash flow was $2.1 billion. When we multiplied that by 20, that comes out to $42 billion, which is significantly higher than their $24.5 billion current market cap. For pillar number eight, Canon looks attractive based on its free cash flow profile. So that's a check on pillar number eight. This doesn't necessarily mean that as investors, we want to run out and buy Canon. We also want to think about the business holistically. This type of analysis is really just a starting point. And to understand the business in more depth, you're going to want to research the business, its industry, its competitors, and understand what the future prospects for this business hold. So before we wrap up, I want to talk about their dividend. So Canon currently pays a dividend yield of about 3.5%, which is more than double what the S&P is at right now. And if we go back five years, we can actually see that at one point in time in July of 2020, Canon was paying a nearly 8% dividend yield. But this doesn't tell us the whole story. So we want to determine if this yield was supported by their cash flows. So to determine that, we're looking at their payout ratio. This is the ratio of how they're paying their earnings out compared to their dividend. And typically, we want this to be below 60%. So currently that's the case. Currently they're paying out at a ratio of about 41%. We can see that from 2017 to 2020, they overly paid out. And actually they paid out more money than they earned in 2019 and 2020. However, it is a good sign for shareholders that they cut their dividend. This is one of the reasons why you don't want to blindly chase high dividend yield. You need to understand if the dividend is healthy and if the business can continue to support that dividend into the foreseeable future. Canon was clearly not able to support a 7% or 8% dividend yield long term, so they cut that in half, and that's much better for long term shareholders. So, in summary, Canon looks attractive based on its free cash flows, but Canon could be a melting ice cube as the business is shrinking. They've had declining revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. And while they do look attractive on their valuation metrics, the best days of this business could be behind it. That doesn't mean that you should cut this out as an investment. As we discovered, they're paying a more sustainable dividend and they're starting to buy back shares. So to consider investing in Canon, remember that this is just a starting point. And as investors, we really want to do more homework here to see if this melting ice cube is an attractive investment. Well, guys, that's it for today's stock analysis of Canon Inc. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. Canon was a subscriber request, so thanks for learning about Canon, and have a great day.